to Elements of Neural Network and Deep Learning Part 6. I am uh, TDMV Ganesh. Uh, so in this, uh, uh, the sixth part is also based on uh, uh, material from Neural Networks uh, and Deep Learning by Professor Andrew Ng uh, uh, at Coursera and other material from the internet. In the uh, in, in, in parts 2, 3 and 4, we saw how to create a neural network and derive the equations uh, for a, a generic L-layer multi-unit deep learning network. And in part 5, we also derived the equations when we needed to do multi-class classification using the softmax output uh, uh, activation function. In this uh, part, we will uh, discuss how to prevent overfitting in neural networks. Neural networks, uh, particularly when you have uh, uh, several hidden unit, hidden layers and uh, hidden units, can tend to overfit. And an important concept in machine learning is what is known as the bias variance trade-off. What is bias? A machine learning model is said to have a high bias when it does not take into account the variation in the data and it basically underfits the data. Variance, when the machine learning model takes into account all the extraneous information and the noise in the data, it tends to overfit the data and it does not generalize well. So let us look at this a little bit more closely. We Let's assume we have a set of data points shown in these, as these black dots. And if we draw a straight line, then we see it does not uh, fit this uh, set of data points very well because it does not take into account the slightly curved nature of this uh, 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 data set. Alternatively, if we, if we have this situation where the, the blue line, you can see it is very wavy and it seems to take into account all the variations in the data. So this is said to have, have a high variance. However, the middle uh, curve where we have a, probably a second order curve that goes through all the points is said to have a good fit. So this is an underfit, this is an overfit and this is a good fit. <coughs> so. We need to prevent this overfitting in uh, neural network, which is uh, something which uh, typically happens. And there are two techniques to prevent this overfitting. And uh, the technique is known as uh, regularization. And there are two uh, methods of regulation. The first is L2 regulation, also known as ridge regression. And the second one is L1 regulation, also known as lasso regression. How does L2 and L, L, uh, L1 and L2 regulation work? We've already seen that the cost uh, when we are doing gradient descent is given as the average of the loss over all training samples. Now to this cost if we add this term lambda by 2m uh, <coughs> into uh, the modulus of uh, the weight square then this term is known as the regularizing term where uh, lambda is known as a, uh, a regularization uh, parameter and uh, however if we take the cost as 1 by m of uh, the average of the loss of the individual uh, training samples and add this term lambda by 2m into the modulus of the weight then this is called L1 regulation. What uh, this uh, regulation does is it basically by adding these extra uh, terms lambda by 2m uh, modulus of w the whole square or in the case of L2 regulation or lambda by 2m uh, modulus of w in the case of L1 regulation is that it penalizes the weights which do not have much influence on the actual output. So here's a, uh, this is actually demonstrated in this plot pretty clearly. Uh, so uh, this is actually taken from one of my uh, pre presentation on uh, in machine learning. So this uh, lambda, in this case it is shown as uh, alpha in this uh, x-axis and the, you have the weights on the y-axis. When uh, lambda is uh, 0, lambda or alpha is 1, then let's assume the weights of a neural network are, are these values. And as you increase uh, lambda or alpha, the weights tend to shrink. And they uh, tend to shrink and they do not have that much influence on, uh, on the output. So as you increase uh, uh, the value of lambda or alpha, the weights tend to shrink and uh, you can uh, prevent overfitting uh, of your uh, neural network. And this uh, weights are just based on this regulation parameter known as lambda. The other uh, technique of regulation is known as L1 regulation, where by increasing this lambda, uh, the weights of the weights actually tend to go to zero. 
However, in uh, practice, generally, L1 regression is more often used. And uh, this is actually the detailed, uh, uh, detailed uh, formula for implementing uh, L2 regression in uh, uh, deep learning networks. Basically, this is the loss term, and then this is uh, uh, using the uh, square of the weights. So this I have done using the regression in uh, Octave. And you can see how the cost slowly increases as you increase the number of uh, iterations and it reaches uh, a low value here. This is another technique known as dropout regulation where uh, let's assume you have a set of inputs and you have a deep, a deep uh, learning network with multiple hidden layers. And uh, what is done in the case of dropout is it was actually employed by Alex Krzyzewski uh, and uh, others when they were trying to use it in uh, uh, recognizing images. There is a parameter was a key prop, uh, which can be any value between 0 and 1. So what is done is, for every layer, we generate a set of random numbers between 0 and 1, and for all uh, equal to the number of units in that uh, hidden layer, and for all values which are greater than the key prop, then we uh, retain the activation unit. That is, basic key prop is says gives us the probability of retaining the activation unit in that layer. So all random values which are greater than key prop, we retain the the activation unit. So it's, in this case, it's, let's assume in this case these two, uh, uh, the, the second and the fourth uh, value are greater than 0 0.8. We retain that, and for uh, the units uh, one and three. It is assuming it's less than the key prop, we drop that uh, unit. Similarly, in this case, we retain the, uh, the first and the fourth and we drop second and three because the key prop value for these two units was less than the key prop. And in the third, we retain uh, the first and the third and we drop the second because its value was less than key prop. And then we'll have the neural network learn based on this uh, reduced set of activation units. So on the simpler neural network, we have the neural network learn and go through one cycle of forward propagation and one cycle of backward propagation. Similarly, then in the next cycle, we again use the key prop and again, based on the random numbers that we generate, we drop a different set of uh, activation units and uh, we keep a, a, a different set. And again, we have a much simplified neural network which is made to learn the uh, uh, which is being uh, which is trained on. So we do one cycle of forward propagation, and one cycle of backward propagation, and we keep repeating this process. That is, we keep dropping random activation units in the forward and backward propagation, and we compute the weights and perform gradient descent. Uh, one important uh, point is that the units that are dropped in the forward propagation cycle also have to be the units that have to be dropped in the backward propagation cycle, and this technique tends to prevent overfitting. And here is my implementation Python using the dropout technique in on the spiral data set. Another problem in deep learning networks is what is known as the vanishing and the exploding gradients. When you have a, a very large and very deep uh, neural network, uh, sometimes when you are uh, trying to perform gradient descent, the gradient sometimes uh, explodes. It increases very rapidly and reaches uh, plus infinity. Or on the other hand, it can drop very rapidly and then uh, reach minus infinity and one of the ways that we can use to prevent this from happening is instead of just doing random initialization when you start gradient descent is to use one of these two initialization one is known as the he initialization and the other one is the Xavier initialization what the he initialization does is for uh, when you uh, generate the weights uh, for the different layers uh, initialize the weights you multiply the weights in uh, each layer, uh, the initialized weights, by the square root of uh, 2 divided by the dimension of the previous layer. And, uh, so that is the weight in that particular layer. In the case of uh, Xavier initialization, you multiply the weights divided by the square root of 1 by the dimension of the uh, previous layer. So the, these two uh, uh, plots show uh, my implementation of the he initialization and Xavier initialization, and uh, it shows uh, the how it uh, is able to generate this uh, nonlinear boundary between the uh, center, uh, two uh, circles. Thank you. And this ends uh, 
the sixth part of uh, elements of neural network and deep learning.